So this problem says we have liquid water that's at 300 kilopascals and 20 degrees Celsius. And we're heating it in a chamber by mixing it with superheated steam at 300 kilopascals and 300 degrees Celsius. So basically it says we have cold water enter that enters the chamber and it gives us a rate. And this cold water is being mixed with this superheated steam in order to warm the water. So let's um, let's work on our problem setup. First of all, this is a problem, and basically what that means is that we have fluid coming in. Well, we have two streams coming in and one stream going out. So we're basically we're mixing the fluid in this chamber, and or we're mixing the two streams in this chamber. So for the first stream, and I'm just going to call this. Um, well, I'm going to call this one the superheated vapor. So it says that one of our streams is superheated vapor and it tells us that the pressure is 300 kilopascals. So I'm going to call this um, S just for steam. So this is 300 kilopascals and temperature of the superheated vapor is 300 degrees Celsius. And then we have cold water coming in here and it tells us that the pressure and I'm just going to call this L for liquid. Um, the pressure is 300 kilopascals. The temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. And it tells us the mass flow rate. So it says the cold water enters the chamber at a rate of 1.8 kilograms per second. So we can, we know that that's a mass flow rate because it's kilograms per second. So the mass flow rate of the liquid is 1.8 kilograms per second. And then we have, and then it tells us um, the mixture leaves the mixing chamber. So our mixture is coming out here at the outlet. And it says that, it, that the temperature, so I'm going to call this TM for mixed, is 60 degrees Celsius. And it doesn't give us the pressure, but the pressure, since the pressure at both of the inlets is 300 kilopascals. Um, the pressure is going to be pretty much the same everywhere in the mixing chamber. And so that means that the pressure at the outlet is 300 kilopascals. And so this is an assumption you can make unless it tells you otherwise. And so if so, it's not giving us our exit pressure. Um, we're just going to assume that the pressure in the mixing chamber is the same everywhere. So. We're going to put this in our assumptions, but assume that pressure is the same everywhere in mixing chamber. And that's for this problem. If it tells, if the problem tells you otherwise, then um, then you'll assume, then you'll go with what it says. And then what we're looking for, we're looking for the mass flow rate of the superheated vapor. So we want to know, um, I'm going to take this off. So this is, I'm just going to say that this mixing chamber is with water. And we're looking for the mass flow rate of the superheated vapor. So we have the mass flow rate of the, of the liquid water. We want to know the mass flow rate of the superheated vapor that we need to supply in order to get this temperature at the outlet. So if the problem says if the mixture leaves the mixing chamber, so if the mixture leaves the mixing chamber at 60 degrees Celsius, determine the mass flow rate of the superheated steam required. So we're looking for the mass flow rate of the steam. All right, now let's make some assumptions. I think this is, we have all the problem information written down. Um, so as far as assumptions, first of all, we're going to assume that this is steady flow. And basically what we mean by that is that the mass in is equal to the mass out. And this problem is a little bit different from the previous ones we've done. This time we have a summation because we have multiple inlets in. We actually only have one outlet, so we can just do this. So basically the sum of the inlets is equal to the mass flow rate of the outlet. So basically we're just saying that this is steady flow. and. So we can, we can actually just add, just, we can put these into our formula now. So we have the, the mass flow rate of the steam, which is what we're looking for, 
we know the mass flow rate of the liquid. So we know that the mass flow rate of the steam plus the mass flow rate of the liquid has to equal the, the mass of the mixture. So mass flow rate of the mixture. So basically, this is just a fancy way of saying what we have going in is what we have coming out. Well, the mass that we have going in is the mass that we have coming out. And we know that this has to be steady flow. It doesn't say anything about this being, like if we go back to the problem statement, it doesn't say anything about this being in a startup or shutdown phase. So we know that the mass inside the mixing chamber isn't changing with time. Okay, so some other assumptions we can make. So we assume the steady flow. We're going to assume that the change in kinetic energy is approximately zero. And we're going to assume that because, first of all, the problem statement doesn't give us any information about velocity. So um, we can't, even if we wanted to take into account the change in kinetic energy, we can't because we don't have any information about it. The other thing is these mixing chambers often the flow, the velocities are often pretty slow and they're not changing a lot. And the reason why is because your mixing process works better with slower velocities. And there's also not a huge elevation difference across the mixing chamber, so we're going to assume that the change in potential energy is zero. And we're also going to assume, so if I go back up to the problem statement, it's not saying anything about heat being removed or added to the mixing chamber. Um, so we're going to assume that this is adiabatic. And that's usually a pretty good assumption for mixing chambers because they're usually well insulated. So since this problem statement isn't giving us any information about the about heat being added or lost from the mixing chamber, we're just going to assume that it's well insulated. And that means that our heat transfer is zero. And this is also a passive device, so the work is zero. Like there's no there's no work into or out of this mixing chamber. All right, now let's write down our equations. So we're going to need a couple equations for this. We're going to need the mass balance, which we've actually already written here in our assumptions when we when we assume that it was steady flow. So we need a mass balance, and we also need an energy balance, or the, the first law equation. And so I'm going to rewrite the mass balance. So we know that the mass of the mixture is equal to the mass of the steam plus the mass of the liquid. And then let's write our energy balance. So we have Q minus W is equal to, and then this is going to be a little bit different from how we were setting up these problems previously. The previous problems we were doing were single stream steady flow. This problem is steady flow, but it's not single stream. So we need a summation. So we have m dot out, and we only have one outlet, but I'm just going to write the really general um, energy balance equation, and then we can cross out the terms that we don't need. So this is plus g z out minus, and then we have mass flow in the enthalpy in, plus the kinetic energy in, plus the potential energy in. All right, so let's cross out our terms that are zero. We assumed both, both the heat and the work were zero. The kinetic and potential energies are zero, so we're left with zero is equal to, and then we only have one outlet stream, so I'm just going to have one outlet stream multiplied by the enthalpy out, and then this is minus, and now we have the sum of our inlet streams multiplied by the enthalpies. And so then we can write this out, so zero is equal to the mass flow rate in multiplied by enthalpy out, or sorry, this is out, and I kind of switched terminology here, so I had called this m dot out m dot out is equal to m dot m. So I just called it the, the mass of the mixture. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. So the mass of the mixture multiplied by the enthalpy of the mixture minus, and then we have the two inlet streams. So we have m, the mass flow rate of the steam, 
multiplied by the enthalpy of the steam plus the mass flow rate of the liquid multiplied by the enthalpy of the liquid. So now what I'm going to do is take this mass balance and plug it directly into the energy balance for the mass flow rate of the mixture. So if I do that, I have zero is equal to, and then this is the mass flow rate of the steam plus the mass flow rate of the liquid multiplied by the enthalpy, and this should be M. Because remember, I check, so the out, the outlet is just the mixture. So HM minus, and then I have the mass flow rate of the steam multiplied by the enthalpy of the steam plus the mass flow rate of the liquid water multiplied by the enthalpy of the liquid water. All right, so this, now let's look at what we have in our equation. First of all, we're looking for this. So we have that term in here twice. We know the mass flow rate of the liquid. So really what we need to find is the enthalpy of the mixture, the enthalpy of the steam, and the enthalpy of the liquid. And what we're going to do is just look those up on the tables. And once we look those up on the tables, we can just plug them into this equation, which combines our energy and mass balance. And then we just solve this equation for the mass flow rate of the steam. So let's get our data. And so I'm gonna start out with, I'm gonna start with the steam. So this is the steam inlet. So this is a superheated vapor. So we have the pressure of the steam is 300 kilopascals. This was given. The temperature of the steam is 300 degrees Celsius, which was also given. And it gave us the phase because it said it was superheated. And you can always verify that by looking up the saturation temperature at the pressure given, and you'll see that this is superheated. So from the superheated table for water, the enthalpy of the steam is 3,069.6 kilojoules per kilogram. Now let's do the, well, steam is water. Let's do the um, cold water inlet. So the pressure of the liquid water is 300 kilopascals and the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. And so this is a compressed liquid. There's no table available. So we're just going to assume that this is a saturated liquid. And we've seen this assumption before. So that means that the enthalpy of the liquid is equal to the enthalpy of the saturated liquid at 20 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 83.915 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, now for the last one, let's do the outlet. So at the outlet, we have the pressure of the mixtures, 300 kilopascals, and that was an assumption we made just based on not being given data for the outlet pressure. And also, it's usually a pretty good assumption that the, um, that the pressure in a mixing chamber doesn't change. So the temperature of the mixture is equal to 60 degrees Celsius, and that was also given. So this is, so if we look up the um, saturation temperature at this pressure, we'll see that this is a compressed liquid but we don't have data available for this, so we're going to once again assume a, saturate, a saturated liquid. So then the enthalpy of the mixture is equal to the enthalpy of the saturated liquid at 60 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 251.18 kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so we have all of our enthalpies. Like if we go back to this equation, we have all of our enthalpies. We know the mass flow rate of the liquid. So basically we can just solve this equation for the mass flow rate of the steam. 
So let's go down to solve and I'll rewrite this equation and then I'm just going to plug everything in. So we have that zero is equal to the mass flow rate of the steam plus the mass flow rate of the liquid multiplied by the enthalpy of the mixture minus the mass flow rate of the steam multiplied by the enthalpy of the steam plus the mass flow rate of the liquid multiplied by the enthalpy of the liquid. So if we plug everything in, we get that zero is equal to the, we're looking for the mass flow rate of the steam, so I'm just going to leave that as a variable. And then we have 1.8 kilograms per second multiplied by 251.18 kilojoules per kilogram minus, and then we have the mass flow rate of the steam multiplied by 3069.6 kilojoules per kilogram plus 1.8 kilograms per second multiplied by 83. Point, that was yeah 83.915 kilojoules per kilogram and then our units work out because the units are going to be kilogram per second for the mass flow rate, which is what we want. So if we solve for the mass flow rate, the mass flow rate of the steam is equal to 0 0.107 kilograms per second. So this is basically the mass flow rate that we need for the steam. If we have, like if we go back up to our problem statement, if we have cold water coming in at the mass flow rate given and the temperature given, and then we want our outlet temperature to be 60 degrees Celsius, our mass flow rate of the steam has to be 0 0.107 kilograms per second. So the main difference between this problem and the, the ones that I've been doing previously with the single stream is this one we, we need to consider our mass balance as well. And with the previous problems, we kind of were considering a mass balance, but it was kind of hidden because remember with the previous problems where we had single stream in and out, so like say we just have a compressor, or actually let's say we have a turbine, so we have a stream in, stream out. Then we were saying that m in is equal to m dot out. So we were kind of considering a mass balance before. It was just a little more hidden in the assumptions. Um, this one we actually needed to write out the mass balance because we needed to consider the amount of mass going in is equal to the amount of mass going out. And then we just wrote our first law equation like we had been previously, except this time we used summations for the inlets and outlets because we had multiple inlets. So when you're solving this problem, it's the exact same steps as the previous problems. First, you're going to do your problem setup. Then you're going to write your assumptions, write down your equations, get your data, and then last solve the problem.